Well, thanks for coming today. Uh, today's an important announcement in relation to uh, strengthening our efforts to be able to ensure safe road use. And that's through the expansion of our driver drug testing processes that we currently have in South Australia. We've been doing random drug testing in South Australia since 2006, targeting methamphetamine, MDMA and cannabis. But as of 2025, we'll be expanding our program to include the ability to test for cocaine. Whilst cocaine, the effects of cocaine are relatively short-lived uh, in terms of how people experience using the drug, that it does remain present within the body for up to 24 hours, which gives us the ability to use our drug testing processes to detect road users who are using this illicit substance. We also know that the use of cocaine, the prevalence of cocaine, is increasing right across Australia, and that's evidenced through our wastewater analysis, which we get regular reports on. In order to uh, ensure safe road use, our intention is to uh, target uh, road users in a random context, uh, utilising this new technology to make sure that uh, if people are taking the risk, the risk of being identified as a dangerous road user will be increased. We know the effects of uh, cocaine can impede a person's ability to make good decisions while on the road. It can contribute to overconfidence, recklessness, and poor decision making and reckless decisions. So we are uh, very excited about the opportunity to step up our road safety efforts. In terms of uh, penalties, will it be, uh, will cocaine be identified as the, you know, the same penalty for any other drug? Yeah, the penalties for illicit drug use, or being detected for illicit drug use uh, through our random drug testing processes are all identical, regardless of the drug. So we are talking about a fine of $849 plus a 102 victims of crime levy. And there is also the risk of your vehicle being impounded and you will uh, receive four demerit points as a result of being detected. Do you um, often hear stories of, of people getting behind the wheel um, and sometimes their drugs can be cut with other um, substances, um, which they might have presumed might have just been cocaine? Um. Well, the reality is for any illicit substance is you just simply don't know what you're taking. If you're purchasing street drugs, uh, then the reality is you, you, you have no true understanding of what's gone into the mix. So the presumption that you're taking a pure substance is a false presumption. And uh, yeah, there is a legitimate health risk associated with taking illicit drugs. And we have seen that time and time again where people find themselves uh, being admitted into the emergency department or in fact losing their lives as a result of uh, not having a true appreciation of the nature of the substance they're choosing to ingest. What so feedback have you had from your interstate colleagues? Um, obviously, this is a something that's already rolled out in Queensland and New South Wales, I believe. Uh, well, Queensland and New South Wales have uh, already commenced testing for cocaine uh, through the random drug testing program. Uh, my understanding is Queensland have already identified over 300 road users uh, who tested positive for cocaine use. Uh, I think that's a validation of the requirement or the need for this expanded capacity within South Australia. Have you changed the actual device that you're testing with? It will be a new device and we're about to go out to tender to secure the new device, but the system that is applied for the drug testing process is absolutely identical. So drivers who are stopped for a random drug test won't notice any difference. It's just expanding the, the range of drugs we're able to identify through that process. So previously, when people were pulled over and drug tested, cocaine wasn't picked up and they would just drive off and you wouldn't know? Or oh, Potentially, they would be able to drive off without being detected, but if there is any a visible impairment, then we still have legislation that enables us to deal with people who are driving whilst impaired. And if a person is involved in a serious injury collision or a fatality, we will be doing uh, drug testing uh, through the hospital process and that will identify a range of other substances, including cocaine. Are you able to explain um, a little bit more in terms of the, the randomness um, that you're talking about? Um, so how's that going to work? Is it, is it a case that it would just be a, a standard patrol car pulling over someone and then conducting a, a random drug test that will include cocaine or will the um, use of this new drug test also form part of roadside RBTs? Uh, the nature of the, the testing process uh, is relatively limited in terms of our ability to roll out right across the entire patrol fleet. Uh, we do have uh, police officers who are specifically trained in doing drug testing and there are some limited areas around the state that also have that capability. Uh, there's also an, an element that uh, we need to manage and that is in making sure that the, the drug testing equipment is properly stored. So most of what you'll see on, on our roads in terms of random drug testing will be by a dedicated drug testing team. Was there, there only one test and not a backup one like we've seen in other states, just one standard test? We have our standard uh, drug wipe, which is uh, collect saliva, um, and that's the way we'll be going about it. In terms of, uh, so just to elaborate a little bit more on the randomness, is it a case that... Um, 
there'll be certain drivers that might be tasked. Like, you know, if you pull out a, one of those um, detection gun things where you can identify if someone's number plate, um, whatever has a history of, of drug use, is that would that be another example? Uh, it is It is legitimately random drug testing where any driver can be pulled over by the drug testing team. And once you are pulled over, you are obligated to comply with the instructions of the police officer who is undertaking that test. Why now? Why do you think it's important to, to roll that down in the start? Well, as I've said, um, you know, we, are, we are aware of uh, an increased level of use of cocaine in Australia, and that includes South Australia. We don't have the same incidence of um, cocaine use as we see in some other jurisdictions, but the fact that it's present on our roads and it is appearing in serious injury and fatality crash testing that uh, warrants us going down this path. You named a few drugs, but is there potential in the future for other drugs that you didn't mention to also be part of this? There's always the potential for us to expand our drug testing regime, but one thing that we are uh, committed to is making sure that when we do expand to a different drug, that the equipment is reliable and uh, is, is able to deliver the results that are necessary to satisfy the, uh, the prosecution process. Is the data showing that um, more people generally year on year are taking drugs and driving um, and subsequently getting caught? Well, I don't have a comparison from year to year in terms of uh, evidence of the fact that we are seeing more people driving whilst having used illicit drugs, but we can say that year on year we are seeing roughly about um, 20 odd percent of people uh, that we are detecting um, with illicit drugs in their system. Uh, when it comes to serious injury and, fat, um, and fatalities, it's around about 20 percent of um, fatalities that have a presence of an illicit substance, and it's about 14 percent of uh, serious injury collisions also we're seeing the presence of an illicit substance. So. Uh, random drug testing is a very important uh, part of our ability to ensure people understand the risks and consequences of uh, not driving responsibly, and that includes using illicit drugs. When, you're, when you say 20%, um, that in itself is pretty alarming. 20% of those people that we are testing, not 20% of total road users. But in terms of 20% of fatalities, that's a pretty high number. Uh, Significant. Yeah, in terms of the presence of an illicit substance uh, being in a person, that's the alarm bell for us that we need to be doing this as much as we possibly can. Does that illicit substance mean alcohol as well? Or no, no, just illicit drugs. In relation to the reliability of the equipment you mentioned before, what would the threshold for accuracy be when you go out for tender for this new product? We, in the, the ABC's reported back in March about issues of false positives and that what that can do to drivers if their, imme- their license is immediately revoked. Well, I think that's there, there is a reality of uh, false positives, but the percentages of false positives are very low. Um, our procurement process will be looking for uh, the devices that we are to select from to meet the accuracy standards that, that will be in place, and I don't have the specifics with me at the moment. Um, and I do think that the, the risks of someone being uh, dealt with and producing a false positive at the roadside uh, can be mitigated by the oral fluid analysis test that we do straight after that. Uh, this is a, one of those checks and balances we have in place, but even in the absence of that, uh, when we know that there is a prevalence of illicit drug use in our community and people choose to drive having used illicit drugs, then we need to make sure that we're doing what we can to identify those people and take them off the road. Would you be concentrating on particular areas such as the CBD? No, random drug testing occurs right across the state. Um, you should expect to see our random drug testing team anywhere on South Australian roads. And when, from when? Uh, from early 2025, as I said, we're going into the procurement process now. Uh, regulations are being changed that in, will include cocaine into the testing regime, which is a necessary step, but uh, we'll be ready to go once we have the equipment secured and those regulations are amended. What would be your message to people watching this, um, you know, thinking that they, you know, up until now have been able to get away with drug driving? Well, not everyone gets away with drug driving. As I said, we do test already for methamphetamine, MDMA and cannabis. We're now adding cocaine to that, which means if you are randomly stopped, we can tell at the roadside whether you consumed cocaine as well as other illicit drugs. And if you think it's, uh, we're hoping that people stop and think about their road user behaviour to make sure that they take responsibility for what is a very important task that that requires our total concentration. If if you're not prepared to do that, then get off the road. Um, Just on another topic, um, regarding the CFMEU, can we firstly just get your reaction to the revelations of what's occurring in particularly in Victoria? Um, and secondly, have you has SAPL ever received any formal complaints regarding uh, similar behaviour or, or the like in South Australia? Well, I think everybody, like everybody, we're concerned to see the infiltration of a trade union by organised crime. 
Um, we don't have any specific evidence that I'm aware of at this time that suggests the same is occurring in South Australia. But having said that, uh, we are doing a review and we'll provide advice to the Premier in due course. The um, Civil Contractors Federation has said in recent days or last week that um, they've made complaints directly to the CFME, not specifically to police, about intimidation, bullying, even extortion tactics being used um, by CFMEU industry delegates uh, on site. Is that Have you heard of anything like that happening in this uh, I'm not aware of any reports to say of, of that type of behaviour, but if, if a person is a victim of a crime, regardless of the circumstances in which that crime occurs, whether it be you know, intimidation or threats being made by... Uh, someone who is a representative of, of an association, then by all means they should be making that report to police. I understand why there might be a reluctance to do so, but we will take any report seriously and investigate. Is the fact that something like this has been occurring in Victoria, you know, in claims to have gone, you know, relatively relatively unnoticed, and the fact that it was, I guess, a, one of the worst kept secrets. A lot of people knew about it, but it wasn't, I guess, on, I guess, in the eyes of the, of the government um, in terms of tackling it and all the issues that were you know, that came with that. Um, the, South, the South Australian government's doing an independent audit, um, they say, of, of government sites, and that will work alongside the SAPOL investigation. Are you able to elaborate a little bit more in, in terms of SAPOL's role and what, what the government's doing? No, not at this stage. Um, as, as was reported, I did have a conversation with the Premier just over a week ago, uh, shortly after the, um, the revelations of the situation in Victoria. Um, and I've undertaken to provide further advice to the Premier, but uh, exactly what that will be and the process we'll go through will keep to ourselves at this point. Is, um, um, just lastly, on the, on, the, uh, on the drug equipment, will you look to implement a technology that's similar to that for alcohol breath testing where you look at percentages of uh, blood alcohol levels as opposed to just is this drug present or not? What level, of, like, will you look at what level is in, uh, in the system? But that's a good point you make. The illicit drug testing equipment is simply capable of detecting the presence of an illicit substance and there are minimum levels that we uh, seek to identify to make sure that it, it is something that can be identified properly. It is not developed to the same extent as alcohol detection where we do get a percentage reading and we can attribute that percentage reading to a degree of impairment. As I said, the effects of cocaine might last in the, the body for 30 to 45 minutes but it can be detected for up to 24 hours. So it does. It means you don't necessarily have to be under the direct influence of, of the drug in order to be identified as an illicit drug user using a vehicle on our roads. So I'm just completely right, just on the CFME, have you been given a timeline or um, no, what no timeline time, would you like no to No timeframes. Uh, as I said, I spoke to the Premier and I had to come back to him when we have something to report. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.